The Boy Who Invented the Popsicle The Cool Science Behind Frank Epperson's Famous Frozen Treat by Anne Reynaud and Milan Pavlovic I want to be a great inventor! Frank William Epperson knew what he wanted to be when he grew up, and everyone in Frank's family knew too because, in case they forgot, he reminded them, often. When not busy with his schoolwork or chores, Frank could be found adventuring with his brother Cray, practicing his cornet, or learning magic tricks. He also pondered important questions. Do goldfish sleep? Do ants have ears? Do woodpeckers get headaches from pecking all day? But Frank's favorite pastime was inventing, and to invent, Frank knew he had to experiment. So off he would go to his laboratory, his back porch. There he doodled and designed, tinkered and tested, analyzed and scrutinized. By the time Frank was ten years old, he had already masterminded his first invention, a hand car with two handles. At twice the speed of a regular one-handed hand car, Frank whizzed down the streets of his neighborhood. Hot dog! Frank also experimented with liquids. But what Frank loved most was experimenting with flavored soda waters, the kind that hissed and wheezed when he held a glassful to his ear and sent tangy bubbles galloping across his tongue with every gulp. Frank had his heart set on inventing the yummiest, most thirst-quenching, lip-smacking soda water drink ever. So off Frank would go to the corner store to buy the flavored soda water powders he needed for his experiments, often with his little brother Cray tagging along. Hi, Big Ep! Hi, Little Ep! Cray was a handy taster for Frank's concoctions. Some of his attempts were unsuccessful. You could even say they were disastrous. But Frank just kept on trying. One day, Frank and the other children in his neighborhood decided to build a miniature amusement park. There was a theater, a merry-go-round, and a scenic railway. Frank was assigned the soda water stand, which suited him just fine. He could share his soda water creations with all his friends. It was also around this time that something peculiar happened. The temperature dipped, then plunged. This would not have been unusual had Frank lived in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, or Pocatello, Idaho, where it could be bitterly cold in winter. But he lived in San Francisco, California, where only rarely did the temperature drop below freezing. So Frank tried another experiment he left a glass of flavored soda water outside overnight. I wonder what this drink will taste like frozen. When he woke the next morning, Frank ran to his back porch to discover his soda water had frozen solid. He could no longer sip it. He had to lick it like a lollipop. Frank had invented a frozen drink on a stick. Hot dog! As he grew older, Frank's invention did not melt from his memory. He just tucked it away in a corner of his mind. And there it stayed while he and his sweetheart, Mary Frances, began raising their gaggle of children. But when Frank noticed more and more people eating chocolate-covered ice cream bars, off he went to his laboratory, now his garage, to experiment. Could I make money with my frozen drink invention? What if I used fruit juices? 
Frank found a way to make many of his drinks on a stick at the same time, with test tubes to mold them, wooden sticks to hold them, and a cool way to freeze them. Hot dog! For Frank's drinks on a stick to freeze, they had to be cold, very cold, colder than zero degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, the freezing point of water. Why? Because their ingredients like sugar and flavoring lowered their freezing point. So what did Frank do? He built a freezing box that held dozens of test tubes suspended in a mixture of crushed ice and salt. Frank knew that salt lowered the freezing point of water and that salty water froze at a much lower temperature than plain tap water. The salt and ice mixture would be colder than zero degrees Celsius. Frank's drinks on a stick also had to freeze quickly. If they froze too slowly, the sugar and flavoring, which were heavier than water, settled at the bottom of the test tubes, leaving just flavorless frozen water at the top. Frank wanted his treats to have the same tasty flavor throughout. The salt and crushed ice mixture surrounding the test tubes was so cold it froze the liquid inside the tubes in minutes. Frozen already? Frank named his invention the Epsicle and began selling it for a nickel at county fairs and beaches. In the evenings, his children helped him roll the nickels he had earned. Frank had a clever way to encourage shop owners to sell his frozen treats. For several weeks in a row, he sent one of his children into a store to buy an Epsicle. Each week, the shop owner had to tell a different child that Epsicles were not sold in the store. Frank would then visit the store himself and ask the shop owner to stock his treats. Of course, the owner agreed after having had so many requests. Frank's children were always keen to sample his father's confections. And with all of them clamoring for their Pop's Tasty Fabrications, in time, the name of Frank's invention changed to Pop, can we have a sickle? Orange is my favorite. The Popsicle. Author's note. Francis Frank William Epperson was born on a logist on August 11th, 1894 in Willows, California. He was an inventor at heart and loved to experiment. By the age of 10, Frank had made himself a hand car operated with two handles. The following year, he left his glass of soda water on the back porch and woke up to a frozen treat that eventually became known around the world as the Popsicle. And in case you are wondering why Frank did not put his glass in the freezer, well, that is because modern home refrigerators with freezer compartments did not become popular in North America until the 1940s. Frank left school at 14 to work in his father's chinaware factory. Four years later, he eloped with his sweetheart, 16-year-old Mary Frances Williams. Together, they opened a business painting china dishes, which Frank sold door to door. Then, during the First World War, he worked as a machinist foreman in the shipyards. By the time Frank was 25, he and Mary Frances had five children, including two sets of twins. Although Frank had secured employment as a real estate developer by then, he always welcomed the opportunity to make extra money for his growing family, which would eventually number nine children. In the early 1920s, Frank noticed that a chocolate-covered ice cream bar had started gaining popularity, and that is when he remembered his childhood invention. Using six-inch glass test tubes as a mold and sticks of wood from the Diamond Match Company, Frank began making his frozen treat, which he named the Epsicle, in large quantities. 
He first tested out the Epsicle in 1922 at a fireman's ball at the Neptune Beach Ballroom in Alameda, California. He and his wife walked around eating one frozen treat after another in the hopes of drawing the attention of those in attendance. It worked. By 1923, the treat was renamed Popsicle because Frank's children repeatedly asked for their popsicles. To ensure repeat customers, Frank printed one free popsicle on every tenth popsicle stick. In 1924, Frank finally applied for patents for his frozen confectionery and his confectionery making apparatus. Eventually, he sold his rights to the popsicle for $50,000 to pay off some debts and help his family through financial hardship. Although he later regretted this, given the wealth the rights could have brought him and his family over time, he was always quick to remind his children that what was important was not what they had, but who they were. In his lifetime, Frank invented a number of other things, including a dictionary to simplify spelling called Spell, a powder drink named Hydry, a sunscreen named Vitano, a signal signaling device for ships to warn them of approaching danger, as well as a rotary engine for airplanes. He also designed and built two of his homes, both of which were inspired by castles. Frank Epperson died on October 22, 1983. He was 89 years old. Today, with more than 30 flavors available, hundreds of millions of popsicle ice pops are slurped every year throughout the world. Frank Epperson's frozen treat, invented in 1905 when he was only 11, is now well over a century old. Frank Wright and his younger brother Cray left, practicing their cornets circa 1907, photo courtesy of Jack Epperson. Frank and his wife, Mary Frances, their eight of their nine children circa 1937, Front row, Frank holding Marge, Teresa standing, Joe and Mary. Back row, John, Frank Jr., Sister Serena, Donna, Don and George. Photo courtesy of Jack Epperson. Frank selling his popsicles, Salinas, California, July 20th, 1923. This is said to be the fir very first photograph of popsicles being sold. Photo courtesy of Chris Long. Vintage Popsicle Advertisement, reproduced with the kind permission of Unilever PLC and Group Companies. Frank making his Popsicle at his stand, Salinas, California, July 20th, 1923. Photo courtesy of Chris Long.